All right, so for this problem, we've got a cold air standard cycle, uh, Brayton cycle with regeneration, intercooling, and reheat. We're given some inlet conditions. We're given a mass flow rate. Um, and really, you know, uh, the only kind of uh, interesting thing about this problem is they give us what's called the overall compressor ratio. So the overall compressor ratio takes into account that we've got this multi-stage compression with, inter, uh, with intercooling. So they give us the pressure ratio between four and one. Right. Um, they also tell us that, let's see, the pressure ratios are across the same across each compressor stage. So P2 over P1 is equal to P4 over P3. And then a little bit further down the line, they tell us the pressure ratios are the same across each turbine. Um, this is something that uh, I, a little thing that I added actually to your problem statement uh, that's, that's on your your problem handout. Uh, so let's see, P6 over P7 equals P8 over P9. And then of course I can um, put my, comp my isentropic efficiencies on there. I've got some inlet conditions for the turbine. There you go. Um, so I need to find thermal efficiency, back work ratio, and the power net output. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some governing equations for that. My thermal efficiency is work net out over QN. Uh, so you can see the work output for the turbines. It's between six and seven and eight and nine. So that comes from applying my first law and then uh, getting things in terms of delta H's and then putting those delta H's in terms of CP delta T because it's a cold air standard Brayton cycle. And then my work input for the turbines between one and two and four, uh, one and two and three and four. Uh, once again, putting, applying my first law to each one of those compressors um, and then getting it in terms of delta H's and putting the delta H's in terms of CP delta T's. Then we look at the denominator, the QN. So we've got a heat addition process between five and six. This is where we're modeling that cons that, uh, that heated it, or I'm sorry, we're, this is where we're modeling the uh, combustion process and we're modeling it as a constant pressure heat addition process. Then between seven and eight, we've got a reheat combustor. So this is uh, between those two turbines, this is the reheater um, for that multi-stage expansion with reheating. So we've got two QNs that we do have to deal with here. All right. Now we got the back work ratio, pretty self-explanatory, work of the compressors over the work of the turbines. Um, and then our power net output, um, I've just taken the work net out in the thermal efficiency equation and multiplied it by uh, M dot. So just be careful with the CP, with the thermal efficiency and the back work ratio that uh, CP, those things uh, divide out. But here with the w dot, net, w dot net output, the CP definitely does not uh, divide out. Uh, so you do need to, need to make sure that you put that guy in there. All right, so let's start solving for our temperatures. So for state one, we're given that. State two, well, I've got uh, an isentropic efficiency of 0.8. So I'm gonna put things in terms of T1, T2, and T2S. So that's my definition for uh, the isentropic efficiency of that first compressor. Now, normally what I do and what I am gonna do here, I'm gonna apply an isentro isentropic relationship, but normally I'm given that P2 over P1 here, I'm not. I'm given a little bit of information on how to find that, right? I know that, let's see, I know P2 over P1 or, and P4 over P3 are equal to one another. And then I know the overall pressure ratio is 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that information and sort of um, tease out what P2 over P1 is. All right, so P4 over P1, overall compressor ratio, that's 10. And I know uh, that P4 over P3 uh, and P3, uh, I, 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 P3 over P1, if I multiply those together, the P3s are just going to cancel out, right? I've just put it in a little bit different terms. So we did something similar when we did the diesel cycle and we had the compression ratio um, and the cutoff ratio. We put V4 over V3 in terms of those terms. So something a little bit similar here. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is because I know that P3 and P2 are one another. So I'm going to replace the P3 with P2. And now what you'll notice, I've got things in terms of P4 over P3 and P2 over P1, which I, uh, the problem statement has said, those are the same. It said the pressure ratios across each compressor stage are the same. So I could just put this in terms of P2 over P1 squared. And then if I take the square root of both sides, I could see that P2 over P1 is the square root of 10. And if I plug that in, I get my T2S value. Then I can use my T2S value to get my T2. Now let's go to state three. So T3, that's given to me. And I could go through the exact same kind of problem solving process that I did to find state two. Um, and I would find that T2 
and T4 are the exact same temperature. And it's not surprising. Same inland conditions, same pressure ratio, same isentropic efficiency, same operating conditions. Then state five, well, I've got the regenerator effectiveness and that's 80% that's given to me in the problem statement. And I'm just gonna define it um, in terms of key regen and key regen max. So key regen is on the top. So that is CP times uh, T5 minus T4. That's the actual amount of heat transfer that occurs by regeneration. But the maximum would occur if uh, the inlet uh, temperature uh, at, at state nine was equal to the outlet temperature at T at state five. So it would be T9 minus T4. I don't know T9 yet, so I got to kind of come back to it. All right, state six is given to me. I got state seven. Well, I've got an isentropic efficiency of 80%. So I'm just going to define my uh, isentropic efficiency for that first turbine in terms of T6, T7, and T7S. I got to solve for T7S. Um, and I don't actually know what P7 over P9 is, but, or I'm sorry, P7 over P6 is. However, I can say that um, P4 over P1, I know that, that's the overall compressor ratio. And then I could sort of tie that to P6 over P9 because let's look at where our pressures are equal. I could see that the pressures are equal uh, state one and state 10, because remember, we've got this sort of imaginary heat, um, uh, heat exchanger where we're modeling the exhaust process. So um, P7, uh, I'm sorry, P1 and P10 are the same and P9 are the same. So one, 10, nine, those are all the same. And then I could see that P4, P5 and P6 are all the same. So you don't have any pressure drops across those compressors. Okay. All right, so now I've got, you know, something, get a little bit closer to what I want. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put that, um, all I'm gonna do is put P6 over P9. I'm gonna put it in terms of P6 over P7 times P7 over P9. I haven't changed anything. I'm just sort of doing the same thing I did before. I'm just sort of trying to tease it out. The P7s are gonna divide out. It, you know, it won't, it won't, it hasn't changed the equality. And then I also know that there's no pressure drop across that reheater between seven and eight. So P7 and P8 are the same. And then I'm also told that the, um, uh, the, the, um, the, what was it? The, the pressure ratio across the, the turbines are the same. So P6 over P7 uh, is equal to P8 over P9. And so I could put that in terms of P6 over P7 squared. And then I can solve for P6 over P7 and then just flip it and I get P7 over P6. And then I can solve for T7S and then use that T7S uh, to get T7. So I'm almost there. Um, T8 uh, is the same as T6 that was given to me. And I could go through the same sort of um, manipulations to find T9 that I did T7, um, but it's kind of the same thing as that the you know the compressors that we saw over there for state four. You'll see that if you plug in the numbers, um, T uh, you've got the same inlet conditions for each of those turbines, and you've got the same uh, operating conditions, same pressure ratio, and same isentropic efficiency. So you'll see that T9 and T7 are exactly the same. And then I think we're all good. I guess the only other thing that I need is to plug that T9 in and get T5, and I've done so. So let's go ahead and plug them in. Easy peasy. Um, so I've got numbers for all of those guys. Uh, if I plug in the numbers for the w.net out, I get things in terms of kilowatts and we're done with our problem. So, all right. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.